Hey, mothers and daughters, I'm back again with another show on how things are made. And guess what? Today, let me take my gum out first because I know me, I want to smack. So I'm going to be talking about holograms. I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about holograms. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get started with the show. But this is my interest to share with you today is holograms. So let's get started. Welcome to the Mother Daughter Ish Podcast. It's your mama's favorite podcast. And the podcast your daughter always wanted. This is Miss Dawn. And Anjali. From, from the 713. Houston, y'all. Get connected and stay connected weekly as new shows debut on Sunday, Wednesday, and please check out our Saturday Out and About Showcase. Enjoy the show. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, and tell every woman on the planet that you know about our show. Here's our show for today. Hey, mothers and daughters, here at the MCI. This is Mother Daughter Ish Show. We'd love for you to support us by joining us over on Instagram at Mother Daughter Ish underscore. Join our book club and our mastermind groups. And if you are interested in advertising your woman owned business, contact us at contact MBI shows at gmail.com. Hey, come on and join our movement. <laughs> so I was thinking about holograms because. I asked myself what I thought about it and I don't like it. I'll tell you in the end why I don't like it. But I was curious enough to know at least how they make them because to me, it just seems like it's a 3D picture. Kind of reminds me, remember, well, I'm going to date myself, but remember when we used to have the little toy that you would put over your eyes and you put like the little film thing in there and then on the side you it was red and the little thing on the side was white and you could click it and you would just see pictures almost like ooh I'm really going to date myself almost like back in the 90s when you had a job and they would save everything on a microfiche so to me a hologram seems like a picture but it seems to me like they've infused it with a person behind the scenes kind of reminds me of the Wizard of Oz. You know, everything was working the way it was working because of the man behind the curtain. So to me, it seems like a hologram is a behind the curtain movement type of thing, but is infused into the hologram. The reason why I say that is because if you look at some of the video games that they show you, that's almost the way it looks to me. I could be wrong because, but anyway, it says a hologram is considered to be images of three-dimensional objects from different angles, three-dimensional objects from different angles. We'll give credit to Hewlett Packer for saying that. A uh, hologram is a photographic technique that records, I mean, that, yeah, that records the light scattered from the object and it presents it in a way that appears three-dimensional meaning that we can see three sides of it which makes us think that it is a solid type of thing okay now the way that they say the holographs are made is that it's a unique method of photography whereby 3d objects are recorded using a laser you know what when I saw the word laser, it made me think of those laser pointers that they used to use in school to show something on the board. And it would always be like a red laser type of thing. And then it says that it is uh, precisely as possible to match it to original recorded object. So let's say you take a person, you record some type of action that they're doing, then you put this light to it, uh, add a voice to it. And I don't know, listen, there was this particular episode in the show Black Mirror, where they took this pop star and they recorded signals from her brain and her voice and everything. And while she was in the hospital, they wanted to make money so bad that they kept recording her in, in concerts and everything to make people think that she was okay when all along she was literally in the hospital dying. Kind of reminds me now, this is just a conspiracy theory, but it reminds me of the last few days when they've been showing weird pictures of Damar. I, I think his last name is Hamlin, the football player that uh, passed out on the field. But they've been showing pictures of him, but he's got his face covered. He's got his hoodie on. They're, they're showing very abstract type things. Now, let me tell you something. If they wanted to shut this entire rumor down 
on conspiracy theories. All they need to do is show us the actual person. So they'll probably do a hologram and show it to us that way. But no one talk. See, this is my thought. If the boy was really going to be shown in public, he would have did a press release. He would have told his experience. He would have talked about how great the doctors took care of him. That's why I don't like it. So then you ask people why they have trust issues. That's why. So anyway, when it's illuminated via lasers, holograms are able to form an exact 3D clone of an object that duplicates its features. So really what you're seeing is almost like looking at a projector. Have you ever had like a projector TV? I know my sister had one or has one. And you can look at movies and things from a projector and it just projects from a film to, you know, the surface of what you put down. So the two basic types of holograms are going to be uh, transmission holograms and reflection holograms. So a reflection is like what you see from a film or something like that. And transmission is going to be, I'm assuming, when they put a particular action behind it, like a human or something. Because I have seen like the behind the scenes, how they make certain movies where they'll put people in a robot type suit and they'll put cameras and pinpoints all over them so that when that particular animal or thing moves, it looks like the human actually moved when it didn't. Behind the scenes watching movies really spoils the whole movie. So I don't suggest you watch behind the scenes because it will spoil everything. Now it says on here, it only takes three months to create a hologram. And I can only imagine by the time you put the concept together, by the time you decide what look you want, by the time you decide what voice you want, by the time you decide the movements from all three angles, and by the time you do a test run to see if it's working properly and how long you want people to see that particular object, yeah, that would probably take three months. And even if it only took two months, I'd still make people wait at least 90 days. So once the artwork is finalized, then it takes about three months to create and reproduce a batch of commercial holograms, pretty much what I just said. It's also estimated that more than 200 million worth of embossed holograms were manufactured in 1995. You know, the interesting thing to me is a lot of people don't pay attention to what we see in movies. But isn't it funny how a lot of the things that we've seen in movies back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, we're literally seeing it manifest right now today. I'm going to do a whole thing on the Jetsons and I'm going to show you how at least 30 things in the Jetsons that they were talking about way back then, we're literally using all 30 of those things right now. I can't wait to do that one. Uh, what stopped me from doing it on George Jetson's birthday was that I could not find one particular thing that I was looking for. And so I was like, if I, if I can't do it full, I'm not going to halfway do it. Now, the minimum requirements that it takes to make a hologram is first, you got to create the hologram. You need an object or a person. So like I was just saying, you need a person that you want to record. You need a laser beam so that it can shine upon whatever object that it is that you're recording. And then you need to do a recording, which is medium, so that the proper, what does it say? Matarius is needed to help clarify the image. So there's a lot of laser beam and photographic things that you have to put together to make it happen. Basically, in my mind, it's just a picture that beams off of something that does something you want it to do to entertain you. It's all about what do you want to see. So if you want to see Whitney Houston in concert, which I hear they're getting ready to do, then they probably already worked on her image. They can take old concert footage how she dressed and how she looked and how she moved, take that and make a whole holographic something out of that, add the voice to it, put it on a stage and boom, there you go. I was curious, can somebody make their own hologram at home? And it did tell me that every year, thousands of hobbyists, students and teachers make holograms at home. They make them at work and they make them at school. <laughs> All you need is your basic hologram supplies that I just mentioned to you earlier, but these teachers and students and enthusiasts, they use a quiet dark room and about 30 minutes of processing of images. Like I just told you, if you wanted to make a Whitney Houston, I just told you, all you have to do, if it's already been done, you can recreate it with a hologram. Keep that in mind. 
So the first hologram concert was in the 90s. And some of the first virtual concerts that came to be were in South Korea. And it was by South Korea music company, SM Entertainment. They first um, experimented with holographic images for a boy band, H-O-T, all caps with a period behind each letter, H-O-T. And that was in May 27th, 1998. So a lot of the things that we see uh, come from other countries and then we pick them up and take them and put our little American twist and spin on it. Now they say right now, and I found another company, but right now it's saying that Museon, M-U-S-I-O-N, and they did trademark that name, is the global leader in development and the marketing and the production and the broadcasting of realistic life-size interactive 3D holograms. I'm going to tell you why this is a problem for my mind real shortly here. <laughs> How much does it cost to make a hologram person is what I was asking. And guess what? It costs anywhere between $100,000 to $400,000. And I'm going to think that it's going to depend on who it is, what you want it to do, for how long, how simple, how quick the function is going to determine the price. If it needs to do something very intricate and we got to license music and license voices, it's going to cost you more. You can't touch a hologram. The only way you'd be able to touch a hologram <laughs> is if the researchers decide to add some type of substance to it, but then it's going to look more robotics. But you can walk right through a hologram unless it's inside of a case, which I've seen some when I was looking at some videos, which I'm going to leave some links to. I literally saw people in hologram glass cases. Guess what? Let's talk about some holograms that already exist. And out of the ones I'm going to list, I only know these three people. The first one I know, Tupac. The second one I knew of Michael Jackson. The third one I knew of, Elvis Presley. So actually there's four because the fourth one is Amy Winehouse. I don't know who Roy Orbison is or Frank Zappa. And I don't know who the classical pianist Glenn Good is. I don't also know who Maria Callas is, but they all had holograms for whatever reason. Now, it's not all that bad. I can tell you some places that, you know, you could get a good, you know, reason to want to use a hologram, but I'm also placing links down in the description bar. But here's what I'm going to tell you why I don't like this idea at all. I don't like it because companies just want to get rich off of the people that are already dead that they, I guess I better not say that, they want to get rich off the people that are already dead just so that their company can continue to thrive and survive because they were making money when these people were alive. So they just are like, let's just continue it, which means to me that it almost sounds like we own you into perpetuity, whether you're dead or alive, we own you, we're going to make money for the next 300 years for our families. It can also be used for trickery. So if somebody wanted to say, well, uh, on on whatever date at this time, on this year, Jesus Christ is coming back. And then you see a big hologram in the sky. For some people who believe like that, they would believe it. See, because of all of this trickery, I'm a little jaded and shaded. I would never believe any of it because of this. Don't wonder why we don't trust. It's things like this that's making us continue to not trust. Also, the fakery makes me, you know, annoyed because people could do a lot of fake things and, you know, be sus you, it would be very suspicious. So, for example, let's say some wealthy person died and they wanted to find out something that only maybe the wife knew or the kid knew or whatever. They could fake a hologram to make you think that you see a ghost or whatever. And because you see this ghost, you then end up giving up information that was proprietary or that's going to benefit somebody else and not yourself, which is absolutely terrible. Don't wonder why humans don't trust. And absolutely don't worry and don't wonder why my people don't trust. That's all I'm going to say. My people could be women. My people could be whoever. I'm just saying, don't wonder why we don't trust. It's because of all the fakery and the trickery and all of this and the way they're using the technology that makes us not trust. Now, I do have a couple of things that I feel like holograms would be very, very, very useful. And I'm going to share them with you right now. First thing I want to do is thank you for listening to the show today. I really want to just take these things that uh, are complicated in some people's mind and really show you how 
these things are made and kind of like a one, two, three, this is how it's made. Because one thing I have learned is that if you have the right mindset and you have the right tools and a little bit of space, you can pretty much make anything you want right at your house. I was watching Ancient Aliens and this one guy had made an entire um, flying car object in his garage out of some old material. He got in trouble for it from the military, but he did it. And I thought to myself, he made a whole rocket in the house. <laughs> you know, we've seen people do a lot right in the house with nobody's permission. So here's a few ways that a hologram could be used to be positive. And one of those ways would be to capture criminals. I think that if you you've made a hologram to capture criminals, that would be on the good side. Kind of reminds me of how they're using the robots nowadays with the robot dogs and California's getting ready to pass a law to have police robot dogs and people are very against it because we know now how you can use it against humans and we just, we don't like that. So that, if you wanted to catch criminals and you wanted to do some kind of fakery trickery thing, I guess it'd be good for use it for that. The other thing I, I think that it would be good for is if you wanted to just purely use it for entertainment purposes but maybe possibly not for dead people like if somebody's dead let, my thing is you live you live you live you live you work you do what you're going to do you connect with who you're going to connect and once you die that's it yes there is a such thing as leaving a legacy but not in the hands of other people who are not blood related to you the legacy should then go to the family only not to the companies who seem to think because they supported them or made their career pop that they are owed all of their money one sec because we know that once you no longer want to deal with them they're going to toss you to the side anyway so it really don't matter the next thing and final thing that i think holograms would be good for using and i've seen this because i saw an actual whole conference that was a hologram and i thought it was kind of unique so i watched the whole thing and so there was a guy who was doing a conference and he was doing it in like 10 different countries and one country he was doing it in. And then he had a hologram of himself on a stage in all these other countries. Um, I don't see a problem with the educational purposes of a hologram or for teaching or for education in multiple places, but to use it for trickery, to use it for fakery, to use it for things like that. I literally find to be disgusting. I find it to be annoying and I find it to be unnecessary. So the next time you see somebody saying that they're going to put out a hologram because, you know, some celebrity, I cannot literally think of any fans that would be so wanting to see their favorite celebrity after they've died that they are going to pay just to go see a hologram when they can literally look at their music video or their entertainment video movie or whatever, or they can go and look at photos of them. They can actually turn the music on the movie on or whatever on right from there. So the only way that I'm going to leave it here, the only way that I want to see a hologram is if you're giving me new information and because you are not a, going to be in multiple places at one time. Now, if you see that picture that's on the screen that was there a few minutes ago, I really, really don't like the fact that I'm also, because I'm on this technology blog and I can't remember the name of it. I just connected with it. Let's see if I can find it while I'm talking, but there's a technology blog, actually a technology Instagram page that I'm on. And it tells you about all the different technology that's getting ready to come. And this particular, um, it didn't save in my thing, but this particular technology, they were talking about um, like you'll be able to, you'll be able to actually, you'll be able to actually read from your cell phone on your wrist and on your wrist you'll be able to see everything and dial a number and do all kinds of things from your, without having your cell phone in your hand. It's almost like, uh, it's almost like using your car without the key where you just have like the push, 
you know, like the push button thing, like the phone right there, where I'm assuming they would have to put a chip in you to do that. And how many of us want a chip in us? Just looking at that same technology uh, Instagram page yesterday, and they were talking about because the healthcare insurance people are getting upset with prescribing medication to people who are not taking it, who are faking it, and they're spending so much money on it, they're going to start putting uh, chips in the a little small chip, the size less than the size of one grain of rice. They're going to start putting that in the medication, and in the medication, once you take it it will send them a signal to let them know you took the medication because they're tired of spending money on medication that people are not using. I'm not down with any of it. I'm glad I'm the age that I'm a, I am because I'm not down with any of it. But again, thank you for watching our show today. It's so important to just be informed. Next month, I'll be talking about a variety of topics. I've got them all written down and ready to go. December and January are such slow months that, you know, you don't get very much done. But we'll be back on schedule for February with everything that's Instagram in here. But thank you, thank you, thank you for watching our show. And remember, it's all for educational purposes, everything that you see. So with that said, bye. And oh, when I find that link to that new technology blog, I'm going to share it in the description box. So make sure you check out the description box. Make sure you pay attention to our Instagram page. That link is coming. Hey, my people and daughters, here at MGI with this Mother Daughter Ish show. We'd love for you to support us by joining us over on Instagram at Mother Daughter Ish underscore. Join our book club and our mastermind group. And if you are interested in advertising your woman owned business, contact us at contact MDI shows at gmail.com. Hey, come on and join our movement. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.